Hi, we are going to tell you a story today. This is our little part of the story of our species, Homo sapiens. We can tell you the story thanks to National Geographic's Human Genographic Pro Project. There are also scientists looked at our DNA and found markers, which tell us how our ancestors migrated across the world from East Africa, where all humans living today come from. The scientists can do this because in humans, the Y chromosome is transferred from fathers to sons and mitochondrial DNA is transferred from mothers to daughters. It turns out, all women living today have exactly one woman who lived in East Africa who is their ultimate mother. Scientists call her mitochondrial Eve. Unfortunately, boys will be boys and today's boys cannot trace their ancestry to a single father. The oldest marker in our genes is M42, which tells us about the 70,000 which tells us about 70,000 years ago our great 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 grandpa, a gentleman living around today's Tanzania, decided to travel looking for easier life and perhaps also because we humans are explorers drawn to the unknown. He traveled a bit up north to meet his long lost cousins in Ethiopia and settled down for a short time, giving our genes the next key of M168. Eventually, one of his descendants would be bitten with wanderlust again. One of the very first people to wander off Africa, this ancestor of ours, waded across the Red Sea at the Strait of Bab al-Mandab, which at the time was just 10 miles to Yemen. His children kept moving north for 20,000 years until we had the second marker in our genes. Our next marker is, our, our next marker is M89, which tells us about another great-grandpa of ours who lived in western Saudi Arabia about 50,000 years ago. Around the same time, so friends of his ended up in Australia and became the first native Australians. Soon, the climate started to change rapidly, again forcing him to consider moving. He could not head back to Africa as the Sahara Desert had started forming, so his only way out was northeast through Iraq and Iran to the rich steppe of Central Asia, and he did not have a lot of time. Fortunately for us, he survived and our next marker, P12A, puts his children somewhere around Baghdad and Tehran around 45,000 years ago. They continued for 10,000 more years into Central Asia. The next marker, M45, puts our ancestors squarely in the vast steppe and Central Asia about 35,000 years ago, perhaps somewhere around Dashanbi in today's Tajikistan. By then, they had figured out how to build stone tools and hunt big game a bit more easily. Scientists also think that this is around when wolves and humans became partners for the first time somewhere in Mongolia, thus starting the great story of dogs and men. Two species which would help reach each other, wait, reach other to eventually dominate the entire world together over the next 30,000 years. In another 5,000 years, that is around 30,000 years ago, our ancestor was living even deeper in Central Asia, probably around the area of today's Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan giving us the genetic key, M207. His family were very much nomadic in lifestyle, and his brothers and cousins would eventually become the first settlers all the way to Western Europe. We think this explains our dad's fascination with Central Asia, the steppe and nomadic people still living there. In any case, our nomadic Central Asian ancestor then moves up north and west. His children have given us the next genetic key, genetic key of P231, from somewhere around today's southwest Russia from 25,000 years ago. Still moving west and a bit north, in another 13,000 years, our ancestor ended up somewhere at least as far west as Belarus, giving us the key M417. While scientists are figuring out more about this M417 key, it appears our ancestor with this key did not move around much as compared to the vast distances traveled by his great-grandparents. From somewhere in Central Europe, our ancestor decided to head back south and east. By 12,000 years ago, he was seen again around the southern, a southern Russia and northern Kazakhstan, giving us the M17 key. His family lived again on the grassy steppes between Central and South Asia as nomadic steppe dwellers, spreading throughout Western Europe to Asia, to East Asia. Today, scientists find the M17 key in, in about 25% of the male population in Iceland. Between 5 and 23% of the male population in Ukraine, 14% of the population in Kyrgyzstan, and 18% of male lineages in Bangladesh. Descendants of this lineage are responsible for spread of Indo-European Indo languages, which include English, French, German, Russian, Bengali, and Hindi, among many others. 
The most recent of our ancestors kept moving south and east to eventually reach northern India. We know from our parents that in the last 1,000 or so years, our family moved from North India to Bengal on invitation by a local king to perform a religious ceremony. Let me tell you another fascinating piece from our story before we end. When our ancestors first migrated out of Africa around 60,000 years ago, they were not alone. At that time, at least two other species of our hominid cousins walked a year walked the Eurasian landmass, Neanderthals and Denisovans. The scientists at the Human Genographic Project found that we share 3.5% of our genes with Neanderthals and about and 3.7% with Denisovans. Thanks for watching. <laughs>